all candidates participating were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price with reader input. I'm Hannah Combs reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer. We are here today with Ben Tillman who is the Democratic uh, Commission candidate in District 2. Thank you for joining us today. You're very welcome. In uh, two minutes, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be County Commissioner? Yes. I, uh, my family's been here for a long, long time in Queen Anne County. and. Uh, I grew up coming here. I didn't, I'm not born and raised here, but uh, I've been coming and I worked on the farm uh, as a youngster and really became to know Queen Anne County mostly as a rural farming community. But I have been here every year um, of my life except for four years that I took out for the service. I was in the Navy uh, during 1966 to 1970. And it seemed important to me to give something back to the county. Uh, and I retired from the printing business. I printed textbooks, which of course is kind of an interesting <laughs> anachronism now, uh, and retired to the farm. And I've been managing the farm uh, for the family interests uh, for about 30 years. And began to think that it was time perhaps to do something to, as I said, give back to the county. Mm -hmm. And I ran for the state senate in 2014, which was an interesting process and obviously didn't prevail. But uh, I got the taste of the political bug at that time and was invited to run this time. Uh, in part, I started because there was no Democrat opponent uh, running and it seems to me unfair that these elections are decided in the primary and it doesn't seem reasonable to expect to change the primary system in Maryland anytime quickly so I decided I'd run. But the more I got into it the more interested I became in some of the issues and most particularly the comprehensive plan which I know we'll talk about a little bit later on. So I'm delighted to be here and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. So again in two minutes, and you've touched on the comprehensive plan, what are the biggest issues facing the county? Well, there are a bunch of issues and some are more important than others and some are more solvable than others. And certainly the Queen Anne County Goes Purple is an extraordinarily important one. But I think that's a fairly successful program in that it's starting to increase awareness. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Addiction is a very complicated and difficult thing uh, to get control of and I believe strongly that it's not a law enforcement problem. It's a medical problem and what I like about Queen Anne County Goes Purple is that it's veering away from this strict law enforcement approach. Uh, I think also this issue of broadband that we were talking about and broadband basically raises all boats as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you need it for education, you need it for business, you need it for homes. Uh, it's fundamental to the economy now. Uh, there's the whole question of traffic and the next Bay Bridge span. That's a huge uh, public works, Army Corps of Engineers undertaking that goes far beyond just Queen Anne County's uh, own sphere of influence. And while it's a huge problem, it's going to require huge resources to settle it. And so I'm inclined to say as a commissioner, you know, I'm very supportive of finding a good solution. But um, there's not a whole lot that we can really get done. Uh, but to me, the most important thing in the county is education. And I'd like to see Queen Anne County have a world-class education system. That's a strategic view. It's long term. It's going to take some commitment, financial and uh, others. And uh, it can be done, but uh, it won't happen quickly. And I think it's important that uh, we get that going for a variety of reasons, which we'll get into later on, I think. Okay. We'll take uh, one minute to provide responses to this next set of questions. Mm -hmm. And the county's comprehensive plan will be updated during the next term. What is your vision for that plan? Uh, I think there are really three things that I think about in a comprehensive plan. But first and most importantly, it's absolutely essential that we get community input. And I think we've done that reasonably well in previous comprehensive plans. 
but we've got to take sea level rise into consideration. Uh, that's going to happen. It almost sounds like now it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And I think one thing people overlook in, economic, in uh, comprehensive plans is infill and redevelopment of existing facilities. And everybody looks at the, exist, at the land and says, what can we use it for? What can't we use it for? What should we, should we not use it for? But an easy solution sometimes is to look at an underutilized business park or land that's already been set aside for development and make sure that we take advantage of that. What provisions would you make to provide needed services for senior citizens? Uh, I don't think the county has been particularly diligent or focused on seniors' uh, citizens' issues. I know there's been some, shall we say, energy in the housing department about some of the senior housing arrangements. I think one of the things that's very difficult to do in a rural area is provide transportation for seniors. Uh, they oftentimes can't, sometimes shouldn't be driving, but they do have to get someplace, and I think that's important. And so if I'd, and I'd also talk to them and say, what do you really want? Uh, I think our answer, their answers might surprise us. You know, it might turn out that they may not want transportation as much as maybe somebody to come around once a week and talk to them. Uh, Absolutely. The uh, county has had requests for funding above maintenance of effort for the school system. What would be your response to funding above maintenance of effort? Um, gee, guys, we didn't do real well on that. Uh, maintenance of effort is the legal minimum. It's a formula that requires counties who are not disposed, and I'm not saying Queen Anne County isn't disposed to education, but for those counties who are looking to strip money out of the education budget, this is a formula that prevents them from doing it. But we're not going to get to world-class education using a maintenance of effort formula. And my feeling is that a triple-A bond rating may be a great thing, but I'd be perfectly happy with a double-A bond rating and a little bit more money going to education. Uh, money, you can't throw money at something. You've got to get value for the money you spend. And there is a provision on the ballot, a constitutional amendment at this election that lock boxes the money from gaming, which essentially means that it's got to be spent on education and that you cannot reduce the general fund by like amount, which is what the legislature has done. So there's funds available and I'd like to see the relationship between the Board of Ed and the commissioners improved. And I know how to do that. That's easy. You just talk to them. Okay. How would you balance future development and protecting the environment? I think the comprehensive plan has to do that and I think that's largely a matter of awareness and I think also make sure that the economic development uh, department and the forces that drive economic development are understanding and sympathetic to the environmental issues. Uh, there are some very, very capable organizations around the Eastern Shore Land Conservancy is one. I was on the board for seven years. I was the president for two. And uh, they have done a wonderful job of preserving lands in perpetual easements. And in some cases you can get paid for them, in some cases you get a tax write-off, in some cases the owner is sufficiently well off that they just simply give it to the state. Of the 880 acres on our farm, uh, 780 of it are in an easement. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very proud of that. Stemming off that question, how would you foster business growth and economic development in the county? Well, I mentioned broadband to start with and certainly you've got to have the tools there to make it attractive for business to come. And I don't think that our economic development organization has been widely enough focused. Uh, I think we need to take a good view at the up county area, particularly with the Middletown bypass coming into effect. Uh, there's going to be a lot of traffic uh, down 301, uh, maybe more than we realize. I know Sage Policy Group has done a study, which is, I've seen a draft of it, but I haven't, I don't think it's been released yet, outlining what that traffic is going to be and the implications of it. I think it's taking advantages of things like that. Uh, certainly hospitality is an easy one, but they're not particularly high paying jobs. I think really what we have to do is we want more Paul Reed Smiths and manufacturing organizations here and start talking to them directly. 
Also, very quickly, retention really is the most important thing. It's so easy to retain a company and so difficult to get a new one that uh, if we're not taking care of who's already here, uh, I think we're missing the whole boat. And uh, stemming from that, we're talking about residents in the northern part of the county. And often we hear them complain they aren't receiving the same level of services that the rest of the county receives. Um, how would you address that concern? Well, part of it is that, of course, that's largely where the agricultural community is based. And, and certainly in District 2, a very high percentage is agriculture. And what I think we tend to forget is that agriculture is business. We think of farmers as being farmers, and that's an entity under itself, but the way they operate now, they're very sophisticated businesses, and we own a farm. I manage it for the family. I've come to understand and know uh, how it really works, and we work with a gentleman named Temple Rhodes who has embraced new technology, but that technology is expensive, $80,000 to retrofit a tractor so that it can operate on GPS. Uh, and I think supporting the, the business of farming is one way that we can help the people in North County. Uh, broadband would certainly help too. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that we haven't discussed maybe that you'd like to touch on? I, I know broadband is a concern of yours for yeah. the county. No, I, I think that I would very much like the opportunity to be a commissioner. Uh, I know it's going to be a learning curve and uh, I think it would be enlightening in, say, the uh, autumn side of my years to do something that would have maybe a long-term impact on the county. And that's why I'm so focused on education and the comprehensive plan. I think of my grandchildren and what I'd like to leave them. And it seems to me to spend four years as a commissioner doing that sort of work would be a very worthwhile endeavor. And I certainly hope people consider voting for me in November. Mr. Tillman, thank you very much for joining us. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure.